Good morning, good morning everybody. It's a beautiful day today. It's going to get warm later, so I'll close up the house, but right now I want it open so that we get that fresh morning air in. My name is Kendra. Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, welcome for the first time. And if you're not brand new, welcome back. Uh, you can see the sunbeams in the yard at least. <laughs> I'm going to show you some um, things I've got going with the quail. There's the one baby that we have out of 12 eggs. Now, I got the eggs from Amazon, and I they were shipped from Virginia. 12 eggs, $20. Shipping was free, I think, or was it 25 Anyway, not for the shipping, 25 total. Uh, it wasn't her fault. The box was real beat up when we got it. I took pictures of it. And um, you can't have one quail by itself. Uh, took like four days to get here in transit, bouncing around from who knows where. He's lonesome, or she is so lonesome. Um, so anyway, my husband is right this minute on his way home with same day old, five days old now, little quails. Little quail? What's the plural of quail? Quails or quail? I think it's quail. Anyway... I'm just going to put them all in here, and we're going to have brothers and sisters. Yes, we are. <laughs> and that's it for the quail right now. I'll show you when the pile's all together in here. Okay, now we have 11 quail. He brought home 12, and they were $5 a piece. So we got $60 worth. Look at them. They are really hungry. <laughs> I can almost tell you who's acting like a boy and who's acting like a girl here by size and by the way they're interacting. One is kind of yellowish. That's going to be so interesting to see how they turn out. 13. I take that back. My math was off. We have 13, not 11. <laughs> I'm just terrible with the numbers. So here's what I'm going to do today. I have a lemon and I have some whole cream like full fat whole whipping cream and I'll show you what I'm gonna make so first I've got my orange I removed the sticker here remember when my kids were little I used to give them the stickers and it was such a big deal off bananas and stuff like that you know little kids think anything's cool like that I guess it's the first time they've ever seen a fruit sticker maybe <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna get this nice and clean and because I'm gonna cut through it and I don't want to drag a dirty knife through the clean fruit that I'm gonna use so, you're going to see what I'm going to do next. Hi everybody, this is what I want to show you today. It's two ingredients, two ingredients to make your own homemade sour cream. You need just two cups of heavy whipping cream, any kind, any brand, just so it's heavy whipping cream, not half and half, and a lemon. That's all you need. So, first thing I'm going to do is I just gave it a little shake, you know, not too much because you don't want to start making it into whipped cream. So I'm going to measure out two cups in my glass measuring cup, and hopefully that's how much I have here. Get down so I can see it. Oh, that's exactly what's in a bottle this size. Okay, I probably could have looked at the bottle and not even had to do that. So here we go. Now I'm going to pour that into one of these canning jars and I could have used a smaller canning jar probably, but I wanted to be able to see it well. So, there we go with that. Nice. Okay, set that aside for a minute. And I'm going to take my lemon and move this aside. And I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to cut it in a quarter. Oh, that smells so good. I love the smell of lemon. All right, I'm going to take my lemon juicer thing here, put the quarter of lemon in it. You know what I should have done? I should have gotten a bowl. I'll be right back. No matter how hard I try to have everything ready, I feel like I always forget something that would have been right to have. So here we go. I'm gonna juice this whole lemon. We've got all of the quail in their cages, in their cage, just one cage. 
It's one of those totes like you would put your Christmas decorations in. So it's working out well. I thought we were going to need something bigger, but they've got more room than they even need. They're so tiny. They're the size of ping pong balls. It's so much nicer than chickens. I didn't realize. If I had realized this years ago, I would have stopped having chickens. I mean, I don't anymore, but we had chickens for seven or maybe eight years. A long time. Oops. Now, i got a seed in here, so I'll just fish it out in the end. It's not a big deal, but you don't want it in your sour cream. <laughs> That was a juicy one. The upkeep on these is so much easier on the quail. I'm talking quail and making sour cream. Anyway, um, they don't kick their food around. They don't waste it as much. They don't drink as much water. They don't dump on it. They don't go potty as much. They um, are a bird noise instead of all day long, you know. I know yesterday when he was by himself, if you watched my video yesterday, you could hear him crying his little eyes out. I keep saying him, maybe a girl. You don't know if they're six or seven weeks old, I guess. Uh, but anyway, now they're all quiet and content. They're all gathered underneath the um, heat lamp over there, unless they're drinking or eating. All right, and I don't even know which one I had versus which ones I got today. I know it was a runt smaller than these. And there's also a runt in this litter. So there's two runts and they're hanging out together. It's so precious. So let me get that seed out. All right, I'm going in with my fingers. I washed my hands. Now, you take the lemon juice. Yeah, like I'm gonna try that. You take the lemon juice and you just put it in here. And pretty much, as soon as you've done that, you want to get in there and stir and use a non-reactive stir. A wooden spoon, I've got a, a skinny spatula here, silicone, and give it a stir. And you're going to see it start to thicken up right away. It is, it's, it's kitchen magic. I didn't know. So, here we go. If I ever run out of uh, sour cream again, like I'm making just something that's all the ingredient I need, like maybe Mexican dinner or something like that, I'll be able to do this. It's, it's, I wish you could see it. Let's look at the consistency already. Okay, so now I'm going to clean this off. Don't waste any. The handy dandy dishcloth here. Now all you need to do is cover it with cheesecloth if you have cheesecloth. Um, if you don't have cheesecloth, you can get it at the grocery store. It's, it's available pretty much everywhere. I got mine at the grocery store years ago, and it lasts forever. I found it in the canning section or baking section. Just ask if you're there and you can find somebody. Nowadays at the grocery stores, there's not a lot of people wandering around going, can you help me find anything? <laughs> Mostly they're just hoping nobody robs them blind in there. Well, in my area anyway. Okay. Cheesecloth is on. It's going to set on the counter for four hours. At the end of four hours, it's like any other sour cream, only better because there's two ingredients in this. There's no, no extra anything in it to whatever it is they do. So I'm going to put it over here by the kitchen sink, and in four hours, I will spoon some up and show it to you and do a taste test. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you like what you saw, I hope you give me a thumbs up and hit the uh, subscribe button. It's up in the upper right hand corner and it's a bell icon and hit it with your cursor and whenever I make a new video, you'll know because it'll show, uh, show up in your lineup. Uh, so I guess that's it. Have a good day everybody. So here it is and what I did was I made some of those uh, little yellow potatoes in the air fryer. I just washed them, sliced them in half lengthwise, and salted them, and then squirted on some olive oil to give them a little bit of a, cr a crunch when they were done on the, on the peel. So, <laughs> this isn't about potatoes, though. This sour cream is very good. It's not what we're used to. So, um, if you're used to the sour cream, it's got carrageenan and whatever else in it. This isn't it. <laughs> it's a softer... It's definitely still sour cream. The only thing I would change if I did it again is I would use three quarters of um, a lemon rather than a whole lemon. And I might stir it more vigorously and longer. I just mixed it up a little bit and threw some you know, cheesecloth on it. 
But here's the, the jar, and you can see that the whey separates a little bit, which, you know, sour cream, it does that. I pour it out all the time, and my kids are like, don't pour out the whey, because <laughs> I like mine stiffer. <laughs> anyway, um, so I liked it, and I may save what's left in here to make something like, if I get in the mood to bake, some sour cream baked thing that takes sour cream, like a pound cake, sour cream pound cake, something like that. Uh, anyway, thank you for sticking with me and watching this whole thing. And if, again, you feel like you want to, I'd love it if you subscribed. I love to meet new people and I love to chat. And have you ever made homemade sour cream? Now, oh, one more thing. This wasn't really cost effective. A bottle of whole fat cream like that, um, two cups, 16 ounces, a pint, whatever that is, that's going to run you five bucks plus some change. So, you know, I can get sour cream for less than that, I think. But it's not homemade. It doesn't have the other junk in it. Hold on, let me get a, a thing of sour cream and see what it says for ingredients. Wow. All that's in this is cultured cream. Grade A pasteurized milk and cultured, I mean, which becomes cultured cream. I'd like to know what the calorie breakdown in this in, is in this and how do they get it so wonderful? Because they do. This is my favorite brand. I don't guess I'll be changing over from Daisy. <laughs> I really thought that you'd see things in here that were not milk. I learned something new today. Alrighty then. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.